lab guy here. I've got good news today. Progress on the NBTV big televisor uh, is moving along. Uh, the unit is uh, fully operational at this point with bugs of course. No lab guy's project is complete without a few bugs. We'll, we'll get them out. Uh, it is making uh, pretty good pictures and uh, as usual has the your typical mechanical instabilities which is part of this hobby and I'm going to show them because I don't want to show the unit working perfectly like here you go you just build this thing and there it is um, people who've worked on these know what I'm talking about and I don't want beginners to go into this thinking that I'll just whip this thing together and it's going to work perfectly you will struggle with it and the struggle is the reward understand that if there's no struggle there's no reward and you you won't have the pride in the finished project that you should so that's all I'll say on that that's my philosophical rambling so uh, I'm going to show you the big televisor operating I'm going to show you the uh, mechanical uh, parts of it and I'm going to uh, at the end put up the current servo system schematic for you to examine and uh, that will be the entirety of this progress report for today so without further ado let's have a look at the NBTV big televisor in operation. These are the four major waveforms of the servo circuit for the big televisor. The upper trace in white is the input video. The trace below that in green is the separated vertical sync interval. That's detected by looking at the missing pulse in the uh, composite sync of the video using a 555 timer missing pulse detector. The third trace down in yellow is the sample and hold pulse. This tells a CMOS switch when to close and take a sample of trace number four which is a vertical speed ramp or frame rate ramp. The period of that ramp voltage is the same as one rotation of the disk or one frame of video. If you look at the top trace you can see a gap in the lower pulses which is the frame sync interval. They do frame sync in NBTV standard video by leaving out one line sync pulse. I use that line sync pulse on trace 2 to trigger a ramp generator which generates a 5 volt ramp in exactly the period of the frame. The lock voltage for the motor drive amplifier on the big televisor is right at 1.95 volts is when the motor is spinning the disc at precisely 12 and a half frames per second or rotations per second and 
the sampling pulse there is hitting just a little bit below 2 volts on the ramp and as you can see it's drifting back and forth this is due to the gain and frequency response of the filter amplifier that follows the sample and hold this is called the loop filter and I'm still tuning it up but success has been so good that I figured I would show you the big televisor in operation and show you some of the scope traces now some of the instability that you see is the result of constructing the circuit on the white breadboard as you can see this is not an ideal noise free construction method the wiring is a bit airborne many small antennas up in the air picking up stray signals lots of plug-in connections lots of them these little jumper wires are not 100 percent reliable so the connections are dirty and the chips are essentially without a ground plane though the metal plate beneath the white breadboard is providing somewhat of a ground plane and it is not stable that's part of it so I am going to be rebuilding the circuitry today onto a more permanent breadboard in fact this piece of breadboard right here it has ground plane on top pads on the bottom 0.1 inch grid 2.54 millimeters uh, between the pads I will be using surface mount capacitors and resistors which will be close to that ground plane soldered connections all of the ICs will be in machined pin sockets looking from the breadboard to the main unit we have my $200 industrial motor that I somehow talked myself into buying and our imported from the Orient PWM motor driver the motor is 12 volts DC the motor driver puts out pulse width modulated 12 volt pulses to drive the motor at variable speeds efficiently and this wire right here carries the 1.95 or 2 volt control voltage to the control input of the board and this board takes care of doing the heavy lifting of spinning that motor turning the televisor around and looking at the other side we're looking at my RGB LED light source on the on this bottom board is an RGB LED intended for the interior of a track light it's a very high intensity lamp and the phenolic board up here contains a three channel 100 milliamp video driver the wires go off to my Aurora Designs world converter which sends RGB video up to the light source I have a small magnifying lens bolted to the front to focus the light onto my plastic diffuser which is located just behind the NIPCAL disc uh, it's working well enough but it could be brighter so this entire unit will get rebuilt in the next few days and uh, will be able to operate at much higher current uh, currently I'm using 2N3904 NPN small signal transistors for my drivers and they are maxed out at 100 milliamps their maximum rating and uh, when this thing is running if you put your finger on the transistors they are hot they, I'm surprised they haven't failed so they are pumping that LED at a pretty high power of 100 milliamps per channel so 300 milliamps total into the uh, RGB diodes and if you 
have this light source removed and you stare into the front of this thing it's uh, very similar to staring into a video projector it's it's pretty bright but I know from testing that, that that LED can get so bright that it will leave you with a big purple spot in your vision. Lastly, there is the uh, photo interrupter circuit which picks up the sink holes that I drilled around the edge of the board uh, by shining light through them using another high intensity LED, a red one, and behind it, uh, behind the disc, is another uh, little vertical board like that containing a phototransistor that picks up the uh, light as it passes through the holes and produces pulses while the disc is rotating. So there you have it. That was the NBTV Big Televisor Project current status report and some of the plans for the near future for that. I hope you enjoyed this report. Thank you for subscribing. I'd like to say to all the new subscribers, welcome. Thank you for signing up. We're getting closer and closer to 2,500 subscribers. Ooh. Apparently on YouTube that means something. I don't mind. So uh, if you want to subscribe, feel free. If you know somebody who likes uh, this subject matter, be sure to tell them about the channel and have them come and take a look. Hopefully my channel is the least pretentious of the YouTube channels that you'll watch. None of the standard rhetoric will be thrown at you here. Uh, we will try to stay on topic with the project and the project only. And, uh, you know, not try to impress you with our production skills, which clearly I don't have. I would rather put out the video for you in a rougher form and get it out to you immediately than to spend my time learning yet another career field uh, to impress people pointlessly. So there you have it. R Lab Guy talks too much. So thank you for watching, and until next time, Lab Guy out. <laughs>